Hi everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am back with episode two of the floating Wonky Star applique quilt. If you're not familiar with this series, the playlist link is in the description box down below. Go check out episode number one and then come back. I've got to tell you, if you watched the first episode, I was really unsure about my fabric choices. I am so excited to say that I absolutely love the way this is coming out. I have done a few things and I want to show you. So in case you're waiting for me to get started before you get started, I thought I would jump in, show you a little bit. We're going to make a block together. And then I probably won't see you again until I'm done, unless I have something else I need to say. This pattern is available to $1 and up patrons and also to my YouTube members. That's different than subscribers. A member is a paid membership. Link is down below for that info too. You can go check that out. And you can see that I did this here and this here. <laughs> I went ahead and made my wonky stars the A blocks, all eight of them, and then I made the four B blocks, and then I wanted to start putting things together. So we're going to continue doing that, but this fabric, I love it so much. I do want to say, get yourself fabric that is not directional. Now this really is not directional. I love that I have all these blocks to cut and sew together because it breaks the pattern up and it looks more wild and crazy than, you know, this. So I'm really happy. But if you get non-directional, then if you need like a, a four by six or a six by four, it doesn't matter. You can just turn your fabric and use it. So here's what I made so far. Where are my stars? Let me show you. Here are my little ones. They're not trimmed to four and a half yet. I have all the size info also for this pattern and for the letter blocks even though I tell you like C eight and a half square if you're doing applique you might want to make the block a little bit bigger and then trim it to eight and a half depending on what you do for decorative stitching or all that so I have uh, my little ones and then I have uh, some bigger ones the B and they are wonky on purpose. I cut two different patterns for the A and then three, I think, for B. But when I trace, I even cut wonkier, too. One even had like a little curved point, and I really liked it. But look, look at this. It looks like sky to me. It looks galaxy-ish. I went ahead with a gold thread um, I had a choice of that or black. I think I would have liked the black better, but I thought the gold would be a little bit more twinkly. And I decided not to do an outline, an echo stitch like I did in a wonky star that I did before I even started this. I just didn't want to take the time and I didn't want to fuck things up. And I know that I could. So I just um, am keeping it very simple. So those are my stars, and now I'm going to show you the two blocks that I finished. This guy is this block here, and what I did is I scribbled it out so I know that I don't want to be repeating any part of that. And I just went with the top left number is 3, so that's what I stuck on here. It's just going to keep things simple because it's like making a puzzle if you don't keep track. So I really like it, and you can see how, you know, the pieces, the swirly things get broken up, and I really like that. And then down here, number 44 block, and I haven't trimmed these. I generally don't. You know, when I put things together, I just eyeball it. So, see, I just like it. There's two stars there. Now, these are the same A blocks, but I made this one a little bit bigger than this one. So I'm very happy with how this is turning out. I think it's going to look super cool when it's all done. Let me decide which one I want to do on camera and we will do it. All right, we're going to keep it simple. And I have to pick something with A and B because those are the only star blocks that I have made right now. We're going to do this right here. 
this A, number 12, 13, and 14. So I need to cut and uh, let me get set up. So I need number 12, number 13, and number 14. 12, four and a half by six and a half, and then 14 is eight and a half by four and a half. So they have four and a half in common. So I'm cutting a four and a half inch strip. Just evening off my edge. And four and a half. Simple as that. All right, so that's going to take care of two blocks. And then the other one that I need is number 13. That's 12 and a half by two and a half. So I'm going to cut a two and a half inch strip. And I'll have some leftovers, but they'll probably work for other blocks. So here's my two and a half inch strip. Okay, so let me just push this aside. All right, let's start with number 13 block. That needs to be 12 and a half. So I'm going to take the selvage off. And 12 and a half. Whoops. I'm working with a tripod here. And uh, I have a whole bunch of fabric behind the tripod, so I'm short on space right now. I don't know what my mother is watching. Okay, so there's my 12 and a half by 2 and a half. Number 12 is 4 and a half by 6 and a half. Okay, so this we cut it at 4 and a half. So now I just need to cut it at 6 and a half. Next is number 14, and that is eight and a half by four and a half. We have the four and a half inch strip, so we need to cut eight and a half. And that's how I do it. Now, if I wanted to, I could continue looking for any kind of block that has four and a half in it and cut those, but then I'd have to, you know, put size info or whatever. I'm just taking this strip. Of course I will use it again because I definitely have more four and a half by whatever pieces and I don't want to waste. Now I do want to cross out, where's my pen? 12, 13, 14. 12, 13, 14. I'm a cross out kind of girl. Now I'm just going to build this. So we're going to just lay it out. Oh, I have to still trim my star. I need to get this down to four and a half inches. And it doesn't matter if they're centered or not, or wonky. I even put these wonky on the fabric because they're floating stars. So they're just going to be floating on this background. So one, two, three, four and a half. Now I'm going to look at it. So I want a, the star. I'm doing it as though you're looking at it the right way. And this goes here. This is going to go... Nope. This is going to go here. And then this is going to go here. And it doesn't always look like it's going to fit, but you have to remember seam allowances. Oh, and I wanted to mention, you know, this is four blocks, four little squares in the graph. Each one is an inch. So that's four inches. But the reason we have to cut four and a half is because you need the seam allowance. So anytime you count four, you have to add a half, four and a half, and then six, add a half, six and a half. So that's why we do it that way. All right, I'm just going to start putting this together. So let me sew these two pieces together first. Then I will add this guy, and then we'll sew it to that guy. I took my mat off, so it makes it a little easier to see. Now this piece, I switched it. I flipped it because I wanted this swirly part closer to the star. Now I'm going to add this. And again, I can uh, flip this if I want. I think I like it that way. And at this point, I only do finger pressing, sewing right there. And you can see now that this matches. So again, I have my swirls to consider. 
I like it with this dark blob near the star. <laughs> so I'm going to go sew that. And this is what we have. I just really like it. And again, you know, I could trim that, but when I put another piece, I just line it up and, like I said, I eyeball it. I don't get caught up in things like that. There are no intersections to worry about in this. I mean, even if it happens to be an intersection, you don't have to worry about it because it's all wonky anyway. So now, just because this is what I always do, I'm going to scribble out that section. And it is number 12. I just look at the top left number. Right there. Maybe I'll make this one next, only because I haven't done a B block yet. Or I just might go finish my A blocks. But that's where I'm going to stop for now. I just wanted to get you guys started. I hope you enjoy this. I'm really liking it. And you don't have to make stars. You don't even have to do applique. You can put anything you want in these gray squares. Anything you want. But it is kind of cool to have it be floating. So in order to get the floating effect, I mean, you need everything in the background to be the same. Even the background that your applique is on. And you can just, you know, cut out any kind of shape. I hope you give it a try, and uh, I'm having fun with it. So I will be back soon with the rest, hopefully the finished product, in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! Double-handed again. I don't get this.